Are you playing Magneto and still doing early 2000s combos like this? Or maybe you watch your favorite streamer do the ROM Infinite and you want to learn it too so you can be like the cool kids. Wow. That's so freaking cool. I wish I could do that. Well, suffer no longer, my friend. I'm here to help. I'm Filth Nasty, and in today's video, not only am I going to teach you how to do the ROM, we'll also go over ways to set up the ROM, and different variations of the ROM, and a bunch of other stuff as well. So let me stop wasting your time and let's jump into the video. So for the complete beginners out there, I just want to quickly touch on Magneto's air dashes, his two light kick variations while airborne, and also his tri-jump. In Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Magneto has an 8-way air dash. This is done by pressing both punch buttons, plus any direction you want to dash into. If you press both punch buttons and no direction, aka when the stick is in neutral, the game will automatically dash forward for you. To perform the ROM, we're going to specifically be using the dash down forward. Magneto also has two different light kicks while airborne. One is performed by jumping and pressing light kick with no direction. You'll see that this kick pokes straight outwards. The second is performed by jumping and pressing light kick while holding down or down forward. You'll notice that this light kick has a little downward angle to it. To perform the ROM, we'll specifically be using the downward light kick. Magneto also has the ability to do something called a triangle jump, or a tri-jump for short. This is done by doing an air dash downward and immediately following it up with a light kick. This seemingly simple maneuver is one of the tools that make Magneto and any other character that has an 8-way air dash super duper powerful and scary. They're essentially instant overheads and they can be very difficult to block. And of course, tri-jumps are also used to perform the ROM. Alright, now that we got the easy stuff out of the way, let's learn how to do the ROM. I'll quickly show you how to do the ROM from start to finish at full speed. And then I'll slow it down so I can explain it step by step. And don't forget to reference the fight stick overlay that I have at the bottom for you. So there you saw me start the ROM with the crouching heavy punch, which is one of Magneto's launchers. It's also very common to start with the crouching light kick as well, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Dash in, crouching light kick. Add a crouching heavy punch to launch. Hold up after the launch so that the game automatically super jumps for you. Add a heavy kick after the super jump. Dash down forward after the heavy kick. While you're dashing downward, continue holding down and do a light kick. It has to be a downward light kick to work. Add a second light kick. Land and immediately super jump into another light kick. Add another light kick. And boom, that's all there is to it. Now you just gotta repeat step 6 through 9. And just to be extra thorough for those that might need it, I'm also gonna show a slow motion step by step. Next, I want to explain two different hand positions used to perform the ROM. You may have heard of them already. One is a claw method and one is a slide method. The claw method is done by using your index finger and middle fingers to press light punch and heavy punch respectively, and that's to do the dash down forward. And then you use your thumb to piano roll to the downward light kick. This is what it looks like slow. And this is what it looks like in real time. Notice how Magneto does a micro dash before the light kick comes out. I suggest practicing this on the ground for a little bit to build up some muscle memory. The claw method seems to be the most common way to ROM among players, and I've also heard some seasoned vets say that it's more consistent as well. On top of that, there's also a portion of this video where I explain how to do a certain side switch during the ROM, and that side switch is a little difficult to do with the slide method, so I definitely recommend learning the claw method. Next we have the slide method. Like the claw method, 
You want to be using your index and your middle fingers to press light punch and heavy punch respectively, but how slide differs from claw is that there's no thumb involved. Instead, your index finger slides off of light punch and hits light kick like so. Here are some examples of both at full speed so you can see what they look like. Practice both and see which one feels more comfortable to you. But again, I do recommend learning claw over slide. Okay, so now let's jump into some common ways to start the ROM solo. The first way we learned to start the ROM solo was with a crouching heavy punch launcher. Like I mentioned previously, this one is oftentimes paired with a crouching light kick to catch opponents that are not blocking low. Adding a crouching light kick is especially good with Magneto's cheap ass because he has a full screen dash, so you'll often catch people with it. Another common and very useful way to start the ROM is with a standing medium punch launcher, which is performed by making sure that the second hit in your combo is a light punch, which in this game ends up being a medium punch, and it also so happens to be a launcher for Magneto. The reason the standing medium punch is so useful is because it has a very specific use, but before I tell you how it's used, let me explain something first. Whenever you hit someone twice on the way down, before going into a launcher into a heavy, it results in a hard knockdown with a flying screen. And we don't want that hard knockdown because it makes it impossible to ROM. On the flip side, if you hit someone only one time on the way down before going into a launcher and then into a heavy, there's no hard knockdown. Okay, well, let's say that you open up your opponent with a try jump, hit him twice on the way down, and then you want to go into ROM. Are you just out of luck? Of course not, my friend, because we can do the ever so handy standing medium punch launcher which will allow you to go straight into the ROM without needing to do the heavy kick setup. After hitting them with the standing medium punch launcher, you can catch them with either one hit on the way up or two hits on the way up, but I personally have an easier time with one hit. And super quick, there's two other ways to start a ROM that avoid hard knockdowns. One is going right into ROM after a crouching heavy punch launcher. It takes the opponent a little high, so you might need to do some height adjusting. More on height adjustment in a bit. The second way is going right into ROM after a standing heavy kick launcher. Same thing as the last one though, it takes the opponent a little high so you may need to do some height adjustment. Another common way to start a ROM is by simply catching somebody out of the air. Magneto is so fast and so f***ing cheap that there are literally endless ways for him to confirm stray hits into a ROM. You can jump and literally just go into a ROM, so that's cool. You can jump, do a heavy, and immediately follow up with a dash down forward light kick to start the ROM as well. Doing a light kick into the heavy before the dash down forward light kick also works. If you're feeling fancy, you can also start a ROM after a guard break. I'm not going to go over what a guard break is in this video, but if you're interested in learning, I'll link one of my other videos up here and down in the description so you can check it out. A nice and easy way to ROM off of a guard break is to normal jump with somebody that's also normal jumping, hit him with a light kick, brief pause, another light kick, land, and then do the ROM. God, what a cheap ass character. Another common and useful guard break to catch opponents from a distance is to super jump and really quickly air dash forward light kick, brief pause, light kick, light kick, into the ROM. Another wonderful and completely fair guard break. Alright, now let's get into some different variations of the ROM and in which situations you want to use those variations in. First up is the height adjustment variation, which in most cases means bringing your opponent lower if they're too high. This variation is two hits up and one hit down. A very common reason you'd want to bring an opponent lower is to set him up for a snap, like this. Another height adjustment variation is doing a double try jump light kick light kick for a fancier looking snap. It's a little harder to pull off, but hey, we fancy out here. The next variations I want to talk about are ones that you do on big bodies like Sentinel, Juggernaut, Blackheart, etc. Since these characters are heavier, their physics are a little different. 
you can do the normal two hits up, two hits down variation. However, you have to do it way faster on these characters. And in my opinion, because of the speed that you're doing it in, it's more prone to error. I think you'll have an easier time doing the two hits up, three hits down variation as shown here. Light kick, light kick on the way up, light kick, light punch, light kick on the way down. This next variation is actually not a ROM, but I still want to throw it in this video because it's another big body infinite that's not as execution heavy as the previous one. So maybe you'll want to use it as an alternative to the last variation. So for this one, you want to get your opponents into one of the usual setups and then you normal jump and then do the magic series, which is light punch, light kick, light punch, light kick. Although this variation is easier, there's two key things that you need to know to pull this off. First is to leave a tiny little space between the first two hits. Second is after you jump up forward, you want to immediately hold down forward because in order for this variation to work, you need the downward light kick to be the second hit. It can be a little tricky, but pay attention to the fight stick overlay and I'm sure you can get it. And just super quick, you can actually combine the last two variations to do something like this. Not sure if it has a specific use, but it's easy and it's kind of cool, so why not? Next are some side switching variations. It's possible to switch sides during a ROM on both normal bodies and big bodies, but they're done differently. Let's start with side switching on big bodies. Similar to the Magic Series Infinite for big bodies, you also want to do the Magic Series for this side switch. But here, you don't have to worry about the timing, because if you don't space out your hits, you'll end up going under the opponent. But that's actually exactly what we want to be able to super jump out the other side. Oh, and this one doesn't require the downward light kick like the other one. It's also possible to side switch on normal bodies during the ROM. The way that I found that is easiest for me is to do a single light punch on the way up. And when doing the tri jump light kick, you do a very short pause between the dash down forward and the light kick. This gives Magneto time to go up and over as well as auto correct the direction he's facing before the light kick hits. You'll notice that if you don't leave a pause like I mentioned, Magneto will go over the opponent and will whiff the light kick because he doesn't face the right direction. One of the reasons you'd want to side switch during a ROM is to keep an opponent in the corner. We all know that the corner is generally a pretty bad and unsafe place to be in. So you always want to do whatever you can to keep your opponent cornered. Another reason is to set Sentinel up for a hypergrav Tempest in the corner. Mid to high tier players are pretty good at mashing out of hypergrav Tempest. So people don't usually go for it that much unless it's on a cornered Sentinel or big body character. Because of the big bodies, it's common for someone to mash out of hypergrav and still get hit by the Tempest because the shards still manage to clip the big bodies. And although they might not get hit by as many rocks, or take as much damage, you oftentimes can go right back into the ROM and try again. Another reason to side switch is to pull off fancy corner only combos like these that include a raw tag. Since the raw tag is being done in the corner, it comes out fast enough to connect with Magneto's standing heavy kick, and it allows you to do cool looking stuff like this, and this. This last variation is just to show you that the ROM doesn't have to be done with light kicks like you usually see. You can interchange almost all hits of the ROM for another button. I believe that the only one you can't change is the downward light kick. You may find that some button combinations are easier for you than others, so jump in the lab and see what you like best. Next, let's jump into some common ways to start the ROM with assists. And honestly, there's endless ways to start the ROM with assists, and also lots of assist types that'll work. But what I'm aiming for here is to just show you the most common ones, otherwise I'd just be here for hours. The one that you've probably seen a hundred million times by now is Psylocke's Psyblade Assist. Psyblade causes a soft knockdown that you can OTG and then turn into a rock. A common way to use it is to dash in, crouching light kick, light kick, and call Psyblade. You can even go straight into a ROM off of a Psyblade hit, which I would recommend you get used to and maybe even prioritize as it eliminates the possibility of someone tech rolling out of a soft knockdown. Sentinel's Rocket Punch Assist is also common because of Team MSS, which is Magneto Storm Sentinel, and also Team Row, which is Magneto Cable Sentinel. Similar to Psyblade Assist, you can dash in, crouching, light kick, light kick, rocket punch, pause, dash in, launcher into heavy kick into ROM. 
You can also go straight into the ROM off of the Rocket Punch. Cable Scimitar Assist also works pretty well. You want to go directly into ROM immediately after the Scimitar hits, so that they don't get too far away from you. And Cyclops Gene Slice Assist is also pretty good. This next portion is just a little bit of a bonus to go over what a 5 Fierce is and why someone might want to go for a 5 Fierce over a ROM. To touch on a few quick pros about the 5 Fierce, it's fairly low execution compared to the ROM, it's a high damage combo in a short period of time, and it results in a hard knockdown which sets you up for a mix up. Those are some pretty good pros, but some cons to keep in mind are that it has damage scaling. The 5 Fierce does less damage the less health the opponent has. And also, the 5 Fierce can't be done if you hit twice on the way down because of the unavoidable hard knockdown. I talked to some top players to get their opinion on ROM versus 5 Fierce, and it seems like the general consensus was that if you know that the 5 Fierce is going to kill, go ahead and go for it. Or, if you know that you have a strong mix-up game, go for it. Otherwise, it's probably best to just ROM it out. And super quick, I want to show you a quick damage output comparison between a side blade into five years and a side blade into ROM. As you can see, it takes about 40 hits of a ROM to get the same damage as a five years on a full health character. Whew. All right, we're finally done, guys. I appreciate you watching to the end. Like the video if you learned something, and uh, watch one of my other videos over here if you want to keep the crack going. And uh, oh yeah, follow my Twitch too. Peace.